Essentially, combat extended melee is either simplistic or complex depending on your knowledge of the mechanics. The melee combat can be quite frustrating and deadly if you simply have no strategy other than charging the enemy. Yet it's also the most satisfying if you reach to a point where a pawn beheads each raider he encounters. Every weapon has two penetration stats, sharp and blunt. If the melee weapon has a higher sharp stat, it will pierce through the armor and damages the pawn, making them bleed. But if it doesn't have enough sharp stat, it will use the blunt penetration stat. And if that goes through the armor, the damage will leave a bruise. Speaking of armor, if both stats does not penetrate the armor, the armor's HP will be damaged instead. If the armor's HP is low enough, the melee weapon can penetrate the armor. To prevent this from happening in the first place, make sure that your armor quality is at least made with the appropriate material and at least normal quality. Steel is the optimal material for armor since it's abundant and provides more penetration than any of the base game materials. Aside from plasteel, which is the best material for armor, it's also the lightest and strongest material. But if you are desperate, I strongly recommend wood. Despite being a weak material, it makes up for its abundance. That doesn't apply in ice sheets and deserts though. So if you're gonna use wood especially for plate armor, be ready to replace it every raid. Keep in mind not all armor is stuffable with materials and only item quality will determine their stats alone. Speaking of materials and quality, melee weapons are also affected by this. To make your weapon stats even stronger, you need the right materials and quality to further its potential. The best material for stuffable weapons is debatable. But when it comes to pure damage and penetration, uranium takes the spot. The downside of uranium is the manufactured weapon becomes heavy. Therefore, you may not have enough space for armor, other weapons, or shields. So uranium is better crafted with one-handed weapons. On the other hand, plasteel is light but lacks the extra power that uranium has. Plasteel is great if you want to have more choices for weapon sidearms, especially if you wanted a two-handed melee weapon along with something else. By the way, if you have heavy weapons, you can just have an arms bearer to hold your weapons and switch gears if needed. Melee combat in CE can be quite straightforward, but there are factors that can affect the results, and the most obvious one is your melee skill. You also have critical hits which doubles weapon penetration for sharp weapons and stunning the enemy if it's a blunt weapon. Both crits deal maximum damage. All of these factors including parry which will be discussed later are affected by melee skill, manipulation, sight, weapon, and the brawler pawn trait. There's also aiming mode where you specifically choose areas or even parts of the body for your weapon to hit. These can be unlocked by leveling your melee skill to 18 and 16 respectively. Other than that, there are two defensive factors, parry and dodge. Parry mitigates damage received by the defender while dodge is the chance where you completely avoid the damage. Parry also crits, which becomes repost, attacking while the assailant is fumbled. Keep in mind parries and repost only happens on humankind pawns. And animals have a special version of their critical hit called knockdowns. Dodge depends on your movement, melee, sight, armor, and how much you are carrying. And the nimble trait, which makes your pawn even harder to hit. Other useful traits include tough, which halves the damage received, ideal for tanky melee pawns like knights. There is only one negative trait for melee users, and that is wimp which amplifies pain, causing your pawn to be easily downed. Shields Shields lessen or even mitigate damage depending on what type of shield a pawn is using. It also comes with a downside such as lower crit rate and hit chance. These stats vary on what type of shield they are using. In example, bucklers are good for melee hand-to-hand -hand combat weapons since they do little to hamper the stats of their user, but it provides little to no defense to other body parts besides the arms and hands due to its surface area. 
whereas a tower or tall shield such as the ballistic shield can protect the user from both melee and projectiles but are unable to attack efficiently with a weapon when holding these type of shields. Note that you cannot attack using two-handed weapons with shields despite being able to equip them. You need a one-handed weapon. The last type of shield is the shield belt which protects you from all kinds of projectiles and explosions and does not hamper your melee skills. The only downside of shield belts is that they do not protect you from melee and when depleted you are vulnerable to projectiles. Tactics The first and most obvious tactic is dumping more of your pawns into one enemy, focusing on eliminating them with numbers. Funneling This method is extremely strong if you have good melee stats with a good weapon, but this is countered if you are against insects, since they tend to target the weak point of your armor, especially the limbs, and can even knock you down, letting other insects pass causing your group to be overwhelmed. Drop Pods A good way of utilizing your melee pawns is to reposition them using drop pods, eliminating key targets. Smokescreen is also a great tactic to use in open fields where hostiles have a hard time hitting you while you're inside it. It's also great for melee users to fight into since their ranged enemies have a chance of hitting their allies. How to deal with a specific type of mob Mega Spiders Do not engage directly. It is not ideal to fight these monsters fairly. You need a fire and smoke to deal with them. Let the smoke rise so that the insects are dazed and then wear a gas mask to finish them off one by one with melee weapons. Scythers You should also be extremely careful around scythers because they shred their armor HP rapidly. I would prefer fighting them on a choke point with a heavy armor, a high skilled melee pawn, and a bludgeon. Lancers Try to stay out of sight and if possible ambush them on corners. Centipedes The same way as lancers but you should have a high blunt penetration weapon and aim for the head to disable its eyes if possible. Also the more pawns the better. Types of weapons Weapons are divided into two categories based on how they inflict damage. Sharp weapons deal cut, stab, damage and are ideal against unarmored to light armored enemies. Some cases if the weapon is of high quality and material, it can pierce through industrial armors. These are ideal for slaying foes instead of capturing them. Since pawn tend to collapse faster with both blood loss and pain affecting their head ifs. Blunt weapons deal bruise damage and can penetrate medium to heavy armored units, but it depends on the quality of the weapon and its material if used against heavy armor. Blunt weapons are also ideal for capturing pawns since they do not make pawns bleed, also great for prison management. These two types have their ultra tech counterparts, but simply put it this way. Don't expect much if you decide to try hitting a centipede with just a medieval mace unless it's the best material and quality.